lost our sunshine and our beautiful weather. That's okay. It's even gray and drizzly, New Zealand. You're still beautiful. Huh. Not exactly the best day for exploring outdoors. It's okay because our next stop is an indoor activity and came highly recommended by loads of you. I was a little surprised, but I guess I shouldn't be because Maori culture is obviously a very big part of New Zealand, so naturally you would recommend this next stop. Shall we go? Yeah. Ooh, it's raining. <laughs> 15 years of marriage, but he hasn't lost his touch. Uh. I'm Nikki, this is Jason, and this is our floating home curiosity. But in celebration of our 15th wedding anniversary, we're temporarily trading in our keels goodbye to curiosity for wheels. And hello road trip. Because that's how our adventure together started 15 years ago. Now this road trip is gonna be a twofer because as we make our way around the Twin Coast Highway of New Zealand, with its dramatic coastlines, ancient forests, and cascading waterfalls, we're also taking a trip down memory lane. A byway of our journey together. The story of us, from the time we said I do and became legal guardians to a 15-year-old, that was a steep road, to the years we spent living on the road and eventually buying a boat without a lick of experience and sailing it halfway around the world to New Zealand. So yeah, here we go. All right, so it's fifty dollars a person, so hundred bucks for the two of us. But we get um, we have a guided tour, which is an hour. And, and then we get a, a performance. So, let's get going. We really had no idea what we were walking into. A giant cowdy tree. Turns out this is the birthplace of the nation. So yeah, kind of a big deal. <sighs> this was a giant cowdy tree, which is what they cut down in 19, oh, what did you say? 1937. And they carved wakas out of it. Pretty insane. Only other trees I've ever seen this big are like the giant sequoia trees, right? Yeah, and the redwoods. Probably the largest trees we've ever seen. And now we're about to head to a forest full of these things. Yeah. It's pretty wild. And those wakas, man, imagine a fleet of those guys coming at you looking scary as all get out. Those wakas are just massive. Like It seems like they go on forever. So they can carry usually 80 and up to 150. It's a lot of people. It's like they're warships. They're warships, yeah. Yeah. New Zealand's history was shaped right here through the signing of the Declaration of Independence in 1835 and the Treaty of Waitangi in 1840. There's an impressive museum that tells the stories and events that led up to the signing of these documents, the actual signing, and their ongoing relevance. But that's just one area. There is so much more. The level of detail in here is unreal because not just the carvings that would have taken, I can't even imagine how many hours, but also the weaving and the patterns and the design. And it's just, they really put a lot of thought and effort into this and it's just looking at the, the tongues and the arms and the body, like everything just has so much meaning built into every single bit of it, which is what always makes all of this so fascinating. Our guide was telling us it's not just the inside of this building that's super detailed, it's also the outside. So there's a warrior's head right above me and then the roof line is his arms like so, and then the sides of the house are his legs. And he's in a haka, stance like this, ready to welcome you into the home. Yeah, and, and the bottom are his feet, did you say yeah. that? And then inside is the, is the woman. She's the one who caresses you and loves you. 
once you're inside. That's, I don't make the news, I just report it to people. <laughs> I got it wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> and that is a fare or a meeting house. So this is Pauline and she's originally from? Auckland. But in, but Tongan. Tongan. Yeah, but I'm Tongan. <laughs> yeah, but born in Auckland. Is this your first time here? Uh, no, we've been here a couple of times, but we just thought, come and visit. Yeah, we're just on a road trip, so. Oh, you're on a road trip? Like us. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Well, thanks for saying hello. Yeah, thank you guys. Yeah, so shout awesome. out to Pauline. Hi. Hi. <laughs> and Pauline's friends. <laughs> Okay, well, I thought this was just gonna be a very quick stop and we've spent, I don't know how many hours Six. here now? Oh, okay. Six. Six hours. Oops. Uh, and I still feel like I could use another six. So, pretty wild. The history is so much more complex than I ever had any inkling. So, bang on suggestion. Like, I thought this was fantastic. Would highly recommend a, a stop. It, the Whenever you buy your ticket, it gives you two days admission. And we're gonna go ahead and move on because we need to, but I would, yeah, I'd, I'd plan for the, the two days because just, it's like the whole independence thing, but then the treaty, and that's what this whole thing is about, is the treaty and how important that is and Maori rights and it's just a lot here, a whole lot here. Respect, for sure. So last time we filled you in on how we met straight out of high school. Our first unofficial date and how we decided to buy a house together before we were even of legal drinking age. And before we were married. And then how mm -hmm. we decided to take our 1985 Volkswagen camper van down to Florida to get married. Which we only broke down once. It's quite a feat for that old Volkswagen. Yes, because she was pretty notorious for breaking down about every 500 miles with something really <laughs> major. We put way more money into that van than yeah. she was ever worth. Yeah. Probably. But, but we made it to Seaside florida and yc side because that is where they filmed the truman show we'd never been there before but we had seen photos and if you want something picture perfect what's better than a movie set yeah. so that's kind of how we came to that one and we went down with almost no plan because we wanted to keep everything really low-key we were trying not to make anything stressful or complicated so i we think thought, that kind of sums up our life though we're pretty much always winging, winging it, it yeah, yeah. kind of diving in all, all the way without really <laughs> having a full plan yeah it's worked so far for the most part. But yeah, so we went down there with, uh, we had rented a margarita machine yep. and a beach house. And that's those, it. those were the two details we figured out. <laughs> and then one day we're down there and my mom's going out to dinner and they find a waiter they like and they say, hey, are you free on Friday? And can this restaurant do to go for 50 people? <laughs> it was a local Mexican food yeah. restaurant. So we had fajitas, fajitas and uh, that was food and yeah. catering yep. taken care of. And then flowers drove around uh, with my aunt until we just found somebody with a nice looking garden. We saw some beautiful hydrangeas, knocked on the door, said, can we pay you to pick some of your flowers? And of course, told her I was getting married. That's why I wanted the flowers. And she said, no problem. Come on in, pick what you want. And of course, didn't charge us a thing and just wished us a happy wedding. And off we went. So that was pretty cool. And then basically, we just hung out on the beach for five days and then got married at the end of the week. And that was that. Was that. <laughs> yeah. After that, the plan was go back home, Sell Seven the house because we were at the end of that five, that five year, year arm. arm. Yep. <laughs> Coming up on that. So we thought we're going to sell the house and then we're going to go on a gap year. Yeah. Some big adventure like go be surf bums in Costa Rica or rent motorcycles and do South America. But life had a different plan for us. Yeah. There's a little bit of a, a wrench in the form of a 15 year old <laughs> that kind of halted all of that. Yeah. Well, because we spent so much time at the treaty grounds, it sort of mucks up our plans, but not really. Like that's the beauty of being on a road trip and in a camper van. Like you can kind of do whatever you want or change plans. Yeah, you can totally wing it. So we were originally gonna go to a winery next, but there's not enough time left. They all kind of close at four and it's 4.30. <laughs> so that's not gonna work. So that's the beauty of using the Road Trippers app though, is you can find something else along route to do. And there is a waterfall that's pretty easy to hike to. It's a short little scent. And I think that there is enough light left in the day we can get there before it's dark. <laughs> so we're gonna go do that. Challenge accepted. Yeah. Drive yeah. fast. Yeah. <laughs> no. I'm not in a camera. Right. <laughs> All right. So that rainbow can I got cows. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing the speed limit, I swear. <laughs> so it's 80, I'm 
back today. The temperature has dropped. It feels like 20 degrees. Along with the sun, temperature is down. It's chilly. I can hear it. Two minute walk to viewpoint one. I, I can make it. Yeah. Five <laughs> minutes to viewpoint three, so I think we're gonna be fine. Yeah. It's going. Look at that. Man, yeah. I haven't seen a waterfall like that in a long time. Talk about gratification. Yeah, instant gratification. Beautiful. All right, I'll get a shot real quick. Second viewpoint, it's another two minutes. Oh. Yeah. It's so crazy how it strikes. Yeah, number three? Number three, I can do another two minutes. <laughs> Hold on, I want to just enjoy it for another second. A little misty. <laughs> It's gonna be real chilly after this photo. It's just a white out. I don't think we're gonna see anything. <laughs> How's your lens? Soaked? Soaked? Yeah. Soaked. <laughs> this one's soaked. This is where cameras go to die. So that's Rainbow Falls. Beautiful. And quick. What do you want me to say? <laughs> I don't know. When camping, one pot meals are the shiz because simplicity. I've got a can of tomatoes, a bag of rice. I mean, really, we're going all out for this. But the beauty of this one is a black bean, well, let's just say bean and corn salsa that I made. So now I'm gonna turn this into a bit of a Mexican dish for some tacos. And yeah, that's what we're doing. Sometimes with these burners, some of the little things will get clogged. They won't light right away. And if you just blow on it, usually we'll spread the flame and voila. What's tonight's pairing, love? Tonight's pairing is a Doppelbach, which is a flavorful German style beer made here in New Zealand. And I'm not gonna pronounce the name because Monteith's, I did it. I don't know why I did that. It's, <laughs> I'm sure it's absolutely wrong. It should go well with our Mexican. What? I should have shot that in slow-mo. Slow-mo, beer shot! Yeah. <laughs> 7% so alcohol. It's been a while since so we had a good beer like that. Hold on, what? get this shot. It's van life, baby. Watch this, okay. Uh, was that amazing or what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. You want some ambiance? Ambiance? Let's go ambiance. Okay. Camper van ambiance. Look at that. Nice. nice. <laughs> so romantic. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for dinner. Thanks for getting your shoes back. Yeah. Ghost Rider. <laughs> well, he scouted out this freedom camping spot that was supposed to be beautiful right by the beach. Doesn't look like we're gonna make it there unless the camper van came with a chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that was part of the package. <laughs> uh, we, we got chairs yeah. and a table. Chairs and a table. We need a chainsaw, people. <laughs> Should we go look at it? Maybe. Our weather has officially turned quite ugly. We knew it was gonna happen, but now it's finally here and it is 
windy and cold and rainy and I'm finding myself being a real punk. <laughs> you have to go out there. I know. I'm like, but it's warm in here and it's cold out there. I've turned into a serious wimp. The tropics, it's just, you get used to a certain temperature and then you just feel like a wimp all the time and anything <laughs> remotely colder than like 75. <laughs> <laughs> so this feels like the Arctic to me. I'll be fine once I'm out there. It's just You have eight layers on. You should be fine. It's hard to motivate. I don't have eight. I've got like six. <laughs> don't exaggerate. <laughs> Parking right here. <laughs> I think this is going to be a good learning moment. <laughs> How do you say that? Ooh, Lake Rotopokaka. Rotopokaka. <laughs> I have no idea if that's right. That's what it looks like, right? Agreed. Okay. We're officially at Lake Rotopokaka. It sounds ridiculous, but it, well, it sounds ridiculous to us because just words we're not used to, but they also have a town called Tutacaca, so. Yeah, and the next beach we're going to is Rotoputa. <laughs> you know, if you have a Maori <laughs> accent, it sounds really cool. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So this is all freedom camping. All the way, look at this. Ah, look how pretty that is. It's like a golf course. Weather. It's still beautiful. Seas all gnarly. gnarly. Yeah. like baby sheep everywhere and cows and hawks and all different types of birds dead possums and their possums are totally different here versus America they're furry they're furry they look cute anyway we're almost to Rangiputa beach it's supposed to be almost like you're back in Rarotonga beautiful beaches pretty water as windy on camera as it is it's like 30 knots maybe gusting 35 it's super intense today <laughs> This is a beautiful spot, but it's a little unclear on whether we can actually stay here and camp overnight because there is a sign that says no camping, but it shows a tent and they have different rules for tent campers versus self-contained like this little van here where we have a gray water storage tank and we have a cassette toilet, but it doesn't say freedom camping. <laughs> so I'm a little unsure on whether or not we can stay here. So we're gonna have to go make a friend to find out. But first, lunch. We're going back into town because there is supposed to be the best fish and chips in all of New Zealand. So says the internet and all the people left us comments on where to go and what to do. So we're obligated. Turkeys! <laughs> They're not for us. No. Like 
ain't too bad out there considering the weather. I am hungry. <laughs> okay. We ordered two different kinds of fish. Jason got one, I got another. We'll just show you what they are on the board. So I'm not going to attempt to see them. That's fine. Sorry, brother. I'm not going to feed you. A little fishy. You go. Thank you for the recommendation. Mm. That's very good. Nice and hot. It's definitely good on a daily today. Mm. I feel like you gotta go a little vinegar. The way it's meant to be consumed. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. Well, I think because of the wind and the rain, we are gonna go ahead and call it a day. Sit down at our computers, take the time to do a little editing, and then pick back up the adventures. Keep our fingers crossed that the weather is lying and it's actually going to be not as windy and rainy as it's predicted to be. We'll make a couple of sacrifices to Mother Nature. So about that 15-year-old that we have never told you about, and because it is complicated and nuanced and involves a whole nother human, so it is not our story alone to tell but we're gonna try to give you the short version of it. A very long, complicated part of our life. Yes. Yeah. So here we go. All right. Um, so I have a sister who is essentially nine and a half years younger than I am. So we share the same father, different mothers. She lived in Oklahoma with her mother and every summer I would go to pick her up and she would spend the summer with me. This particular summer was our wedding. So we're catching up kind of all the, the days leading up before the wedding and everything else. She's filling me in on what's been going on at home. Things are not good. In the back of my mind, I'm thinking there's no way I can't take her back. But I thought, all right, we're gonna have to just sideline this because we've got a wedding. So we get back home and I tell Jason, I'm like, okay, we have to talk. And I'm incredibly nervous to have this conversation because I'm about to load him down with a whole bunch of information. Baggage, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I had to literally just say, what do you think? Meanwhile, hoping for a really good response because if I wouldn't have gotten one, I was like, what the heck do I do from there? Yeah. So basically she just tells me everything that's happened to her sister over the past few years and mm -hmm. how not good it is and said, well, what do you think? And I say, well, we can't take her back there. So next step was filed for guardianship. So I got guardianship of my sister. And so we are now the proud, proud guardians of a troubled 15 year old. <laughs> yes. So we uh, took her to public school. Yeah. That didn't last very long. Decided that homeschool was the best route for her. And so now I am homeschooling my 15 year old sister at 24 years old. Yeah, meanwhile, I'm working double and triple the amount of jobs, just basically working every free minute that I have so I can afford to pay for this new human that we are Not now responsible, responsible for. for. Yeah. We're self employed, so we have absolutely no benefits. Mm -hmm. So I picked up a job at Starbucks because if you worked, I think it was like 25 or 30 hours, you were eligible for benefits. So I was able to work there, get family benefits for all of us. We had health insurance. Oh, and the morning shift. She took the morning shift. She does not like to wake up early, but yet she was getting up at like four or 3.30 in the morning yeah. to take a shower and then go to Starbucks before it opened. Oh <laughs> man, I felt so... Oh, guilty. <laughs> but, uh, mostly because I'm just not a morning person, yeah. but that was the best shift to still be able to be home later. Like yeah, I got so off at eight o'clock. Yeah, yeah exactly. like I, I really, I think that was what it was. Yeah. I think it was off at like eight or 9 a.m. Yeah. So it was kind of perfect because we were both freelance. I would take my sister on my jobs, mostly because I didn't have anywhere else to leave her, but <laughs> also because she actually did have a really good work ethic. She was a really hard worker. So I would bring my now 16 or 17 year old assistant with me on these big jobs and she did great. So of course she kind of had essentially a job yeah. from the time she was 15 on yeah. working as a, uh, an assistant makeup artist and stylist. Fast forward to now. She's a beautiful person, has two beautiful kids, <laughs> just an amazing photographer. So proud of her. She's done so much work. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. Oh. So I will drop a link to her website yeah. down below. Absolutely unapologetic yeah. shameless plug yeah. for a photographer. If you are based in the US or of course in Texas, that's where she is. Um, you can check out her work there. She is 
really quite talented. Yeah, so we felt like once she had graduated high school, when we graduated her, yeah. and she had gotten her own apartment, and she was doing pretty good. She had a job, so we felt like, okay, she's, she's solid. She's on the right path. Now, let's look at that, that gap year we were going to take four years ago. Yeah. Okay, so now we're 28. Yeah. And deciding that we need to go on that big adventure. Mm -hmm. It was a blustery night, and this morning is just more of the same. The goal is to make our way all the way to the tippy the top, the most northern point of New Zealand, the furthest north you can go. There is a beautiful Focus. <laughs> Get blown all over. Yeah. Hey, other crazy people are here. Look at that. Yeah. How many layers? I don't know, I lost count. Because it looks nasty out there, but lighthouses were not made for perfect days. They were made for weather like this and much, much worse. Okay. Ooh. Switching right. cameras now. What's spectacular about this is it's where the Pacific Ocean and the Tasman Sea collide. And normally it's like wah, 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 wah. Whether or not we'll be able to see it will be a different story. Yeah. Okay. okay. Here we go. Oh, oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man, there's some waves right out there. That's for sure. I don't know what that is. That's where they collide, I think. Okay, let's, let's go over there. All right, I see the lighthouse is this way. It's not super crazy. It's just a little crazy. Cape Rainia. Okay, there we go. It's the Tasman Sea over here, Pacific Sea over here. They clash together, make these whirlpools, and that signifies to the Maori people the coming together of female and male and the creation of life. <laughs> well done! Ugh, looks gnarly. You would not want to sail through that. No. Oh. Especially not on a day like today. I mean, those waves are breaking. Yeah. It looks gnarly from way up here. It's got to be crazy down there. Right? metaphor for our wedding and life of marriage. 15 years. We had a few storms. It's mostly beautiful. So at this point we're 28 years old. We've survived dollar theater dating. The full circle experience of buying and remodeling and selling a house. Being entrepreneurs and starting businesses. Both freelancers, yeah. making that whole thing work. And of course, raising a um, teenager. A teenager. <laughs> 28 years old, looking back at ourselves four years previous and going, oh. Now's the time to go. <laughs> yep. 
we are, we're free. We, yeah. it's, if we're going to do anything, we should do it right now. So before we get sucked back into life, back mm -hmm. into the American dream, let's go find a new adventure, maybe a new place to live. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of all the thinking that led us to selling, selling everything and moving into an RV. But we will save those stories for next time. When our worlds collide, the yeah. two worlds collide. That, that was the ticket. I was about to say that. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Bye. Maybe I should have kissed you. Mm -hmm. no. I want people to think you like me. <laughs> I do like you. When... Don't do this. <laughs> <laughs>